from the field after shooting at 51% from the field last season. Guys will chime in oh. on that later on Countdown. But obviously, the biggest news of the day in the NBA came from our Adrian Wojnarowski. As the Knicks have fired David Fisdale as their head coach, the firing came 25 days after the Knicks held an impromptu post-game presser regarding the Knicks' support for Fisdale. So let's walk through the firing and the latest with the Knicks, which is already having a rough season. Following the loss to the Cavs on November 10th, President Steve Mills and GM Scott Perry held a news conference talking about their disappointment in the team. It has not improved much since then, though. The Knicks are currently 4-18. and 18. That's the worst record in the East and tied for the worst start through 22 games in franchise history. Yeah, nobody likes that. And the last couple of games have been especially tough for New York. The Knicks have lost by a combined 81 points over the last two games. That's their worst point differential over any two-game span in team history. And because we're talking Knicks history and how bad it is, guess who had to uh, come into the studio? He was waiting to have dinner, and now he's here with us, Stephen A. Smith. Yeah, <laughs> Can I just say something, though? You had so much fun with the Cowboys loss, and yeah. you laughed, and yeah. you wanted them to stay together, yeah. Yeah. and then you were ready to have your dinner. You were ready to spend time with your family. Lasagna, and then, and lasagna. Then, yes. And then your team, yeah. Yeah. the Knicks willed you back into the studio. Well, see, that's... Because the head coach has been fired There's now. no surprise. There's no surprise because I was on a high because the Dallas Cowboys lost mm -hmm. and as a result their fans across the world are absolutely miserable which makes my day mm -hmm. and then I reminded that there's something worse than the Cowboys and that's the New York Knicks who are absolutely <laughs> god awful we understand that yes. uh, they got rid of David Fisdale he was a coach that from what I'm told wanted out it was frustrating him the entire situation a 21 and 83 record can frustrate you there is no doubt about that he's been awful but people that are willing to stop there and the New York Knicks organization has an abundance of people that are willing to do that I'm not letting anybody off the hook. You accumulate this roster. Their mentality was bringing a bunch of forwards because you're going to need a multitude of dudes to play on that front court. You need veterans to help season the young guys, etc., etc. But in the same breath, they want to say that they supported David Fisdale. I would find that more believable if David Fisdale was playing, Kev playing Kevin Knox. I would find that more believable if the young players were being developed. It didn't, it didn't seem like any development was taking place. There seemed to be no rhyme or reason to how they were playing. Jay and Paul and Jay will tell you in a heartbeat. There were games where we saw Marcus Morris bringing the ball up the court and actually running the offense. I don't know about anybody else, but I know those three brothers over there know this. We have never seen Marcus Morris do that in his career until he became a New York Knicks. So suddenly he's a forward and the next thing you know he's the second coming to Rajon Rondo only with a New York Knicks organization. It's embarrassing. It's mm. disgusting. It's gotten on my last damn nerves. I'm pretty ticked off, but it is what it is. Can we, what do you want? Can we, can we, what do you want? Can we talk about what this really is? This is black on black crime. <laughs> you know that, right? This is black on black crime. How many black coaches do we have in the NBA currently? Six? 20% of the league. Black coach. I don't care if he wants to go or not, Fisdale. We're going to ride this damn thing through. You're going to continue to fight through this, and we're going to build for the future. So you don't let him go? go. Talk, talk. So you're saying that Fisdale should have stayed? I, uh, this a yes. I disagree. Why? Because when I looked at him, I saw a man that was defeated. I saw a man that was frustrated with how moribund and pathetic the situation was. There does come if there does come a point in time where if you love and you care about somebody, or at least you respect them, you release them from their misery. Mm -hmm. And the New York Knicks are in a miserable situation. There is no way around that. <laughs> so it was a love. It was a move of love. It was a, it was a move of love. They, they, they let him go. Let's go with that. And let's go with that. Once you don't get KD, once you don't get Kyrie, you know what this is? Yes. This is called a long-term investment. Well, it's it? nothing about a short-term investment on the team. When did these expectations come, come to come fruition come. that we thought will, this team was going to make No, I will say this to you. I will say this to you. Clearly, there was no long term, which is the indictment, because even though the Knicks will tell you that, the reality is, is that they have a whole bunch of guys on their squad that are one year players. You paid Julius Randle a three year deal. You drafted RJ Barrett. I get that. But pretty much when you look at this roster, there's nothing long term going on here. It seems like the plan is create cap space so we can attract the star. But there's no way in hell you're going to attract the star with the situation being the way that it is, the way that it has been. And I'm really sick and tired so of having a reminder. It's the best coaching gig of all time. Really? Just because get in and get out. Get your money. No. Guaranteed money. Well, you can That's say that. Any coach you, can, do. Uh, you can look at it that way. I can look at it another way. There's nowhere to go but up because you can't get much lower. I feel you so didn't bad say that about so Cowboys all the time. But tell me, <laughs> what would you do? What huh? would you do if you were in control here? What is the next move that your New York Knicks have to take or should take?
take me personally, and I've said this, whether it's about Mark Jackson or to a lesser degree, I think you're going to hear the name Jason Kidd. They're going to deny that. I think you're going to be hearing Jason Kidd's name come up in the days and weeks to come. I'm, I'm being told that that's somebody that Dolan likes. We'll see what happens. Here's what I will say to you. Mm -hmm. I've always been about Mark Jackson, but it's never been because of basketball. It's because New York is such a, a depressing basketball situation for decades. It's not a basketball coach that these guys need, and it stops there. You need somebody that when he speaks, he's believable. He's one of your own, and when he talks, you're going to be inclined to give him the benefit of the doubt and exercise patience because you finally have somebody talking basketball for the franchise that New Yorkers can relate to. The problem is when you think about, listen to me, and I'm not saying he should, but when you think about Steve Mills or even when you think about Scott Perry, who, damn, who, had a damn, who has a damn good reputation in the I NBA agree. circles, okay? The problem is they are perceived as being an extension of Dolan. Right. So even when they talk, it's hard to really, really take them seriously because you're wondering when Dolan's going to get in the way. Whereas with a coach that has folks in New York who support him mm -hmm. is running his mouth every day and speaking to the media. That is the only chance you have to get New Yorkers to get back on board because we're all depressed. Okay. We're all depressed. <laughs> tell. Well, well, hey, okay. While we're on the subject okay. of you coaches. You don't care about me, Jay. He does. You he don't does. care about he me, does. Jay. Okay. Jay does not care okay. about me. No, no, no. no Wait, you guys, look at this. Look at this. Comforted. Look at this. Be comforted. Steve Kerr has tweeted about the situation, so take a look what he has to say oh. about the Fizdale firing. Yeah, if I had gone to New York, that would have been me like three years ago, Steve Kerr said. I'm mm -hmm. well aware of that Kerr almost took the job the year the Knicks hired Derek Fisher now then here's the here's the part that Steve Kerr did not say in that tweet mm -hmm. Dolan didn't want to give him a fifth year mm -hmm. didn't want to guarantee it but then turned around and guaranteed it Fisher. to Derek Fisher <laughs> mm. you just can't make this up you just can't make this up you just can't make this up that's why I was laughing Maria yeah. you just it's can't laughable. make this up it's laughable you know, and you know, it's laughable to you. It's laughable to you. It's laughable to you. You took the Jordan, man. Why don't you just go away? Thank you. I mean, I'd rather her hug me than you. Thank you. You know, Thank I don't you. like it right now. Yeah. I really don't. It's okay. You're a national. It's really not It's going to be fine. It's Everything's bad. Be fine. It's bad. Remember, you got to stay together. Just like you told the Cowboy fans. They're worse than the Cowboys. Everyone stay together. See what I'm saying? Everyone stay together. I'm going together. home, y'all. Go I'm get going your home lasagna. All right, go get your lasagna. Don't call me again, y'all. By Mountain Dew. And welcome to our New York studios for NBA Countdown. Maria Taylor and the whole gang is here. We've got Paul Pierce, Adrian Wojnarowski, Jalen Rose, and Jay Will. The A team in the building. The, yeah, whoa. We're the A team. No okay. doubt. I'll take we that. Are the A -team. Yes. <laughs> this is why we're the A team, though, because if you were following Adrian Wojnarowski, he broke news for ESPN that officially the Knicks have fired their head coach, David Fisdale. Yes. It's not really a shocker. Shocking. Maybe the timing is. Um, but assistant coach Keith Smart was also dismissed by the team. Fizdale went 21 and 83 during his time with the team, finishing with the worst win percentage in franchise history by a head coach. And remember, the move is coming off the heels of an eight game losing streak, back to back 35 point losses to the Bucks and Nuggets. And that was the first time that that's happened in franchise history. Um, so take a look at what the future could potentially hold for the Knicks. They do own some future first round picks and own the 2021 unprotected first round pick and top 10 protected 2023 first round pick from the Mavericks in that Porzingis trade and up to $60 million in salary cap space next summer. So there are some moves that could be made, but obviously changes are happening. And we've seen this happen multiple times. I mean, 13 different head coaches uh, over the last 20 years. So this is nothing new. But the question is, where do they go from here, Woj? Well, Jim Dolan has to decide what kind of organization he wants to have here. And he has had the ability in the past to go out and recruit and offer that president GM title to the very best, the elite executives in the league. He has not done that. This job, despite all the um, uh, controversy that comes with, with Dolan, be, besides all the dysfunction, this is a job that still appeals to the elite uh, in the league and it's gonna have to start with Steve Mills moving aside for the Knicks he has been here for in two different stints 13 years you've seen a historic run of losing but the Knicks still appeal to I think the very very best in this league but Dolan has to find a way now to get the messaging out 
that he is willing to allow the changes that need to take place within that organization mm -hmm. to open the door for whether it's a Masai Ujiri, a Bob Myers, those kind of executives who you would like to go pursue in New York. So what I'm hearing from you is it's not even a coach's problem. I mean, sitting at 4-18 and 18 and firing the coach, that's one thing, but you're going even higher than that. I mean, who is even to blame here? And you're laughing right now, Jay Wilson. I'll go <laughs> well, to you do, first. Are they going to appeal to any you know, elite 